Over the last few years, a new breed of eateries have sprung up in Singapore. Riding on the nostalgia of yesteryear, they offer a dining environment that invokes memories of the past. Located at Upper Thompson Road, Old School Delights was conjured up by Aaron and Olivia Teo, the great-great-grandchildren of Niam Tong Boon, the inventor of the Singapore Sling. The siblings spent a year planning before taking the plunge to start their own business in 2010. They have filled the cafe with knickknacks and memorabilia that were either from their home or things they had played with while growing up. The brother and sister pair wants customers to relive their memories of Singapore through the food and plan for the menu to serve a variety of quintessential local dishes without using any monosodium glutamate. Mi Siam literally means Siam noodles, and its origins are often disputed. Depending on whom you speak to, the dish is believed to originate from Thailand or is a creation by either the Malays or Peranakans. Made with a blend of 11 freshly roasted spices, the Mi Siam dish uses a 30-year-old recipe from the sibling's grandmother. Cooking the gravy is a laborious process and they sometimes have to rope in their family to help out in the kitchen. The dish is not overtly spicy and squeezing lime juice over the rice vermicelli noodles gives it a sweet and tart flavor, reminiscent of Thai cuisine. If you have a sweet tooth, order a glass of Bundong Dinosaur, a type of jelly made from rice flour and coconut milk, and a scoop of sago are first added to the glass jar. Rose cordial syrup and sweetened condensed milk are then poured in and the drink is topped with finely shaved ice. For a spicier dish, you can order a bowl of curry chicken. The portions of chicken meat are generous, and you can share the dish with friends if you want to make space for other tasty food on the menu. The recipe is uncomplicated and uses ingredients like red chilies, lemongrass, ginger, curry leaves, and tomatoes. Pieces of potatoes and chicken meat are then added to the curry and cooked. The curry is mildly spicy, and the lemongrass adds a pleasant and not overpowering lemony fragrance. The potatoes are soft without being mushy, and the chicken is tender. A twist on a common drink sold in Singapore and Malaysia, Old School Delight serves up an iced chocolate te chino. The blend of frothy milk and red tea settles into three layers, and each sip surprises with a different taste. If the taste of chocolate was more pronounced, the drink would be perfect. If you are used to foods with strong flavors, you might find the chicken macaroni soup somewhat plain tasting, but for the locals, the dish is a throwback to Cantonese chow during their schooling days. The combination of salt, garlic, and chicken bones are first boiled for two hours. Fish balls, slices of carrots, chicken strips, and macaroni are added to a portion of the broth cooked and then served in a bowl. For some light eats, have a plate of top hats. The nanya snack is filled with sliced turnips and carrots which have been cooked until they turn soft and topped with diced hard-boiled eggs. The bite-sized cups are then garnished with coriander leaves and a dollop of homemade chili sauce. The crispy exterior, coupled with the pulpy vegetables and spicy chili, make for an addictive snack and it is a bestseller. The menu also devotes a section to desserts and the cakes have proved popular among customers. The lemony cake lives up to its name with the refreshing zest of lemons. Made with fresh lemon juice, the sponge cake is dense and is perfect with a cup of hot tea. The chocolate banana fudge cake is filled with the pulp of fresh bananas and covered with a layer of thick chocolate fudge. The banana cake itself is mildly sweet and carries the fragrance of the fruit, making it a delectable choice for a casual afternoon tete-a-tete. -tete. Despite its more secluded location, Singaporeans still flock to River South Prawn Noodles and the bowls of piping hot prawn noodles continue to enjoy the approval of its customers. The store moved to its present location 16 years ago and is situated in the midst of a private residential estate. If you come at lunchtime, you can take in the heady aroma of the prawn soup as you wait for an available table. 
Madame Purring recalls spending her growing up years helping her father, but says that times have changed and having a good education is important now. Despite having inherited the family business, she is not hard up for her children to inherit it, wishing that they enter it only if they are completely willing to do so. As the orders come in, the kitchen is a flurry of activity and it is not uncommon to see the kitchen staff cooking multiple orders. Most customers order the prawn noodles with a serving of pork ribs, but you can also choose to add pigtail or abalones. The prawns are pre-cooked for a few minutes in boiling water to 90% doneness and are lightly doused with the prawn broth before being served. The pork ribs are cooked with pork bones and pork rind to give them a rich flavor. Madame Prung says that while their pork ribs might not be the best tasting, they are still able to hold their own among other competitors. There is nothing secretive about how the prawns and pork ribs are cooked, but the central difference is the broth. The brownish red broth is what turns the store into a winner when it comes to creating the unami taste characteristic of prawn noodles. After removing the pork ribs, the pork stock is added to the prawn stock along with white pepper, ikan bilis, and some prawns. The broth is kept at a simmer and receives a taste test after each seasoning to ensure a consistency in flavor. Even though there are some customers that request for her not to use pork stock in the broth, Madame Prung refuses to do so because she is insistent that the meat flavor completes the dish. Always keen to improve the taste and flavor of their dish, she acknowledges that they listen to their customers' feedback and suggestions and occasionally take trips to try other stores' prawn noodles. They have even tried using another species of prawns because customers find them to be more succulent. Though she obliges and adds more prawns to the noodles if customers want their money's worth, she shares that it is impossible to please all customers. Each customer has different preferences and it is impractical to stock up on many types of the crustaceans. Instead of using tiger prawns, which are larger in size and thus have more meat, the store imports saltwater prawns from Thailand as they are given a better diet and are better grown. While customers might not taste the difference, she says that when natural disasters forced them to import prawns from Malaysia, it ended up changing the taste of the broth. Each bowl of prawn noodles starts from $3 and its price increases accordingly depending on what other meats you choose to add. If you do not have a liking for yellow noodles, you can opt for other types of noodles. Both the dry and soup version are popular, but if you really want to taste the dish, have the dry version first. The yellow noodles and thin rice noodles are cooked al dente, tossed in a light seasoning and garnished with pork lard and fried scallions. The soup is a balance of sweet and saltiness and is fragrant with the prawns flavor. The flavors are not as distinct in the soup version, but the unami taste of the broth continues to linger in your mouth long after you finish slurping up all the soup.